Hey guys, it's Howitzer here, and sorry I'm a little bit late on this one, but I was away from the computer for the weekend when this news had come out. But we have got some awesome news and updates for the Godzilla anime. It finally has a working title, and we've even been giving a synopsis. Now first off, the title is Monster Planet, or Kaiju Planet if you prefer. I will note that this is the title for the Japanese release, and the American release may have a different name. The film is set in a future where man has battled the kaiju over and over again only to be pushed to the brink of extinction. In a last ditch effort, the chosen few will board a ship with the mission to migrate to a safer planet. Upon arrival, they find the planet isn't as human friendly as they thought and they're forced to rethink their plans. This happens on the last summer of the 20th century when man has the sad realization that they are not the only rulers of Earth. This is when the kaiju make their entrance, along with the king of the kaiju, Godzilla. For almost a half century, man fought the kaiju, losing battle after battle. By 2048, the central government commissions their artificial intelligence to pick a crew to man the vessel, the Eritrum. They were to travel to a new planet so that man could start anew without the threat of kaiju attacks. The film sounds like it's going to center around Haruo, a young man aboard the Eritrum. I can't help but wonder if this is a nod to Haruo Nakajima, the man who played Godzilla in many films. Haruo was orphaned as a child at the early age of four when his parents were killed by Godzilla right in front of him. He is joined by other crew members, all of whom have been chosen by a form of AI that's managed by the central government. Their destination? Tau Cetus E, a planet 11.9 years away from Earth. They reach the planet in 20 years, so we can at least assume that the technology of the time will allow for standard space travel at up to half the speed of light. The new planet was thought to have properties that allow for a safe range for humans to survive, but upon arrival, their numbers were off and the planet is not habitable. It's noted that Haruo spends the 20 years trip to the new planet focusing on the want and need to return to Earth to kill Godzilla to avenge the death of his parents. Once they find that the planet is unlivable, they end up living aboard the ship for an unknown time until the life support systems on the ship begin to fail. Haruo is then said to join up with a group of people who want to return to Earth. They end up using a long distance hyperspeed jump and end up back home, but it's to an Earth that is 20,000 years older than when they left it. By now the entire ecosystem has changed with Godzilla firmly planted at the top of it. Will mankind be able to take back Earth? The film is written by Jen Urobuchi, who also wrote Gargantia, another epic anime in which mankind reaches beyond Earth to live. Godzilla Monster Planet is based on an outline done by Urobuchi and Sadayuki Mirai, who wrote the space battleship Yamato series. Another fitting work of anime in which mankind are almost destroyed by aliens and end up building a spaceship in order to escape the Earth. Space Battleship Yamato is considered one of the most important anime series for showing a more complex and serious side to anime. It ended up influencing such works as Mobile Suit Gundam, Evangelion, and the SDF Macross series, or Robotech as it's known here in the States. Anno has ranked Yamato as his favorite anime and gave it credit for sparking his interest in anime in the first place. We all know Anno from Evangelion and of course from directing Shin Godzilla. I'm pretty excited for the film when you've got resumes like this attached to it. The poster we see has a tagline when translated that says we will definitely retake the earth and had the following description for it. A figure of a young man, Haruo, wearing a skin suit approaches while above him, multiple spacecraft descend, and on the ground, there's bipedal robots and armed hover bikes at the ready. The planet on which they've landed upon is... Dot, dot, dot. And it ends there, but I think we can be fairly certain that this is Earth and this is them on their return trip to retake the planet. Once I see these robots and the hover bikes, I can't help but think of Robotech again, especially since I watched that series on TV every day after school as a kid. In the third Robotech series, they have to try to retake Earth from the Invid, a similar situation to what we see here in the Godzilla anime. Now this won't be the first time for Godzilla to grace the animated screen. It will be the first time in movie form, but we've seen him before in animated series. 
In America, we've seen two different Godzilla animated series, with the original series produced by Hanna-Barbera and Toho in 1978, which ran for two seasons, and then we got Godzilla the Animated Series, based on the TriStar 1998 Godzilla film, which was shown on Fox Kids, and it also aired for two seasons. In Japan, they've also had a couple Godzilla animated series for kids, with Adventure Godzilla Land and Recommend Godzilla Land which ran from 1992 to 1996. The shows had both animated and live action aspects and featured super deformed or chibi versions of Godzilla and the other kaiju. In this series, even though they were troublemakers, Ghidorah and Gigan were basically friendly monsters. I just learned about this series not too long ago and you gotta check it out. There's videos for it on YouTube and man is it crazy. Now I have a couple questions for you guys about what we can expect in the animated movie. What will be the design of Godzilla in this one? What will he look like when they leave, as opposed to when they return 20,000 years later? Will he be different from the passage of time? And I don't just mean by being older or slightly bigger. Is he going to mutate further or be changed in some other way? How large is the fleet that Haruo's with on his way back? We see mechs and hoverbikes and tons of landing ships, but we really don't have a grasp yet of just how big the fleet is. Will they be other kaiju from the known Toho universe, or are we going to get entirely new ones? Do you think Mothra or Ghidorah will make an entrance? The last question I have is about the plant growth that we see in the concept art. Is that related to kaiju? Biolante, perhaps? Or is it just simply overgrown plants? We won't know until we see the film, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. What kind of questions do you guys have about the movie? Are you excited for it? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I will see you next time.